There's nothing like a pandemic to remind us of just how interconnected we are, how mutually dependent we are. We often think of ourselves as being independent, but this reminds us that we are interdependent, we are social beings, we belong to a social species. And I think the experience of the lockdown through COVID-19 has forced many of us into a period of introspection that we might not otherwise have engaged in, sometimes triggered by frustration, sometimes just by the fact that we had more time than usual to think about what really matters to us, uh, what the shape of our life looks like, whether we're heading in the direction re we really want to be heading in. And this time of reflection, I think, has led to a number of important changes in our attitudes and in our likely behaviour. I'd, I'd offer five reflections. One is clearly government is back in our lives. I think this is the end of the period when we said, let's have small government, let, go let get, get government out of our lives. We wanted government back. We wanted government to be taking charge, uh, to be advising us on the most appropriate strategies for dealing with this. And we wanted government to be attending to the science. We were pleased by the fact that the medical scientists had such a strong influence on government policy. And I think many of us are now hoping that governments will pay as much attention to climate scientists in the future as they have to medical scientists through the pandemic. I think it's been a time when we've thought maybe we could lead a more flexible, a more balanced life in future. Maybe we could simplify things particularly for people who've been able to work from home, and that's not everyone, but for people who've been able to work from home, I think there's a dawning realisation that not that we would want to work from home always, but that we could sometimes work from home, that we could balance uh, working from home with going to work, sometimes avoid the peak hour traffic and so on, and just introduce a more balanced approach to our lives. Uh, part of that, I think, is my third reflection, which is this is a time when people have really enjoyed the slower pace, the rather more expansive days. Some people have been bored, some people have been lonely. But very often, this has led to a reflection on the fact that we were running too hard, uh, that we were too busy, we were going to too many meetings, we were planning too many trips, we were buying too much stuff. And we didn't really need all that. We could pull back a bit. We could live, again, that word sim simply, we could live more simply. We could de-stress. Uh, we could slow the pace a bit and probably uh, still get as much done as we need to. I think we've seen a revival of the spirit of compassion in our community. More compassion, for example, towards the lonely the people who are permanently socially isolated. We're thinking a bit more kindly about them now that we've all had a little taste of social isolation. We're, we're thinking more charitably, more compassionately about the unemployed. Uh, we've been realising for a long time that we don't have enough work for all the people who'd like to work. Well, uh, the huge spike in unemployment during the pandemic uh, has meant that we have, a, 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 I think, a changed attitude towards people who are unemployed or underemployed. I think many managers during the lockdown, if they were managing teams of people who were working from home, uh, encountered some individuals who were having trouble working from home and dealing with their social isolation, dealing with feelings of loneliness, and realised that pastoral care and support was an important part of their management role. And I think that learning is likely to stick as we realise, as things get back to a more normal way of working, that compassion, pastoral care is always an important part of the management role. Uh, but the final point I think uh, worth making about this is that in some ways it's the most important, uh, that we've rediscovered the neighbourhood. In our major cities, we'd reached the point where many people would just say, well, we don't know our neighbours, not with any pleasure, but just acknowledging that that's the way it is. I think the pandemic has forced us to realise that there's a local herd that we herd animals live in 
called the neighbourhood. Now, we've got families as well. We've got friendship circles. We've got work colleagues. We've got clubs and associations and choirs and book clubs and all these things that we belong to as well. But there's this special thing, this precious thing called the neighbourhood, which is where the people are we can call on if we need immediate assistance. It's where people always are, uh, not just when we ask them to be there. These are people we live amongst that we didn't choose to live amongst. They're probably not our best friends. We probably don't like some of them. We don't agree with some of them, but they are our neighbours. And I think the rediscovery of the fact that an important part of my role as a citizen is to be a good neighbour is another learning that is likely to stay with us long after the pandemic has gone.